Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet finally in the grand finale, the final presentation of the politics of princes and powers and praying that all those that have been following this presentation right from the beginning you have been exploded your intelligence into the flexibility dimensions of uniqueness in understanding in knowledge equipment and weight diversity many diversities of wisdom and knowledge were taught from part one and two and many attributes of the spirit which are mysterious were presented in part one and two i featured two servants of god namely job and apostle paul and before i take you into today's final episode which is now going to be the politics of princes and powers part three I'm praying that those that have been allowed to be following this presentation from part one, you are being given enough depth in the things of the spirit. You are being given the necessary understanding and the strength to continue fighting in the good fight of faith. Now today, in the final segment, we're going to be looking yet into another spiritual character, one of the greatest servants of God, who wrote the entire book of Genesis one of the greatest servants of God who is also destined to be amongst the last two witnesses written in the book of Revelations. So for us to understand the politics of princes and powers, which is now the final part three, let us get into scriptures in the book of Exodus chapter 4 verse 1 and it reads and Moses answered and said but before I get into Exodus chapter 4 verse 1 I'll just brief you up on how Moses is born as a Hebrew in the house of Pharaoh and inside the house of Pharaoh Moses grows up as a prince of Egypt but his loins are of the tribe of God. And this thing, it is a thing that had been allowed by the Lord. And the Lord that had allowed this thing, had allowed this thing for a specific purpose. And the reason why the Lord had allowed Moses 
to grow up in the house of Pharaoh is because the Lord sought an encounter against Pharaoh. The Lord will take his time to do a thing. He will allow you to grow in the midst of an enemy. And when the right time comes, he's going to execute his mission. And Moses grows in the house of Pharaoh. Past 30 years inside the house of Pharaoh. Up until the Lord, the same Lord, provokes an encounter which caused Moses to kill an Egyptian. There came a time when Moses was now being moved by the Lord. Why? Because his time to deliver his own tribe that was enslaved in the land of Egypt had come. So many times Moses would go and spend his time with the slaves and Moses yet to grow up in the house of Pharaoh so that he could start how Pharaoh operates so the Pharaoh that is now sitting on the throne is also a prince of Egypt. He is probably a pharaoh uh, that grew up with Moses. This one was from the loins of the pharaoh system and Moses just grew up in that house. Why? Because he was adopted. I'm not going to be taking you back into the story of the basket where Moses was left inside the basket and then taken into the palace. And because of the death of this Egyptian, after fighting with an Egyptian over matters that regarded the slaves. Moses journeyed away as he escaped from Pharaoh why he knew that his life was now going to be at risk. And he went and encamped with Jethro and there he stayed up until he was now 40 years old and this is where Moses encounters a burning bush this burning bush I'm going to be explaining about it I'm going to be revealing something that has not been spoken so many times about this burning bush. While least Moses was eating cake, he comes across a burning bush. And inside this burning bush, there was a voice. And the voice that spake from that burning bush was the voice of an angel. If you read the scriptures properly, you'd realize that it was actually an angel that spoke from 
that burning bush. But most people, when they read scriptures, they have not explained or they have not defined that very part. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto you. This was Moses responding to the burning bush after being given an assignment. And the assignment that Moses has been given by this burning bush is to go back where he has escaped from Pharaoh after meddling an Egyptian. And this is the very same place where he is being told by this burning bush to go back and deliver the children of Israel who were slaves. Now, I'll just take you back to Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush in Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. An angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flesh, in, in, a, in a flame of fire, rather. So many times this part is ignored that it was an angel of the Lord that appeared unto Moses in the significance of a burning bush. Most people, they prefer that God was speaking to Moses in a burning bush. Yes, it was the Lord, but in scripture what is written is that it was an angel of the Lord that spoke to Moses within a burning bush. And that angel of the Lord that spoke unto Moses is obviously a prince. And when the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. The reason why the scripture is saying the Lord is because the angel that was speaking from within that burning bush was an angel that had been assigned by the Lord. So it was indeed the Lord that was speaking unto Moses, but through that angel. And that angel that had been assigned, it was a prince. And Moses has been raised in the house of Pharaoh as a prince. And Moses himself, according to his rank and the assignment that he was now being given by this burning bush, was that of a prince. This is why the burning bush is instructing Moses to go back as a prince not a prince who is raised in the house of Pharaoh, but this time as a prince of the kingdom of light. And the angel that is being represented there as the voice of God and representing God himself, it is a prince. And the Pharaoh that Moses is going to stand before to bargain, to negotiate, to demand the release of the children of Israel who are still under captivity. That Pharaoh is also a prince. And the angel said unto him, What is in your hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, cast it on the ground, and he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from that serpent. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, 
and take it by the tail. You can imagine, this is the Lord through this angel who is commanding Moses to throw down a rod. And as soon as Moses threw down the rod, it became a serpent. And so many times, the serpent has always been resembled as a creature of evil. And yes, it is. According to scripture reference and significance, even if you read the book of Revelation 12, that dragon, that serpent of old called Lucifer the devil, the serpent deceived Eve and Adam in the garden. But when it comes to the Lord, the Lord wants to show Moses the influence and the capacity that he has as a prince. How he has got capacity as a prince of the kingdom of light over the kingdom of darkness, which is his opponent. The Lord wants to show Moses how he has capacitated him, not only with the authority of the kingdom of light, but even with the authority which the kingdom of darkness thinks that it holds. And Moses put forth his hand and took the serpent by the tail and put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand again. That was a miracle that had been performed there, that was performed by the Lord. And the Lord said that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has surely sent you. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, put now your hand into thy bosom. The reason why Moses is being instructed all these instructions which are miraculous is because Moses has questioned this angelic prince of fire which is in the midst of the burning bush. How shall the people believe me? How shall I stand before Pharaoh? Remember when I left Egypt, I left Egypt because of a meta case. And you want me to go back and stand before that evil, ruthless prince of Pharaoh and command and demand him to release the slaves on top of all that I've gone through. So all these miracles that Moses was being instructed, they were miracles that were supposed to motivate him to give him the confidence to energize his peace so that he goes back and moreover he was being equipped with that power and the authority by the lord and moses put his hand into the bosom and when he took out his hand behold that hand was now leprous as snow And he said, put thine hand into the bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again. And he plucked it out of his bosom. And it was turned again as his other flesh. Meaning that his hand became ordinary. What had happened there was a sign once again. And the prince, which is the angel of fire, which is in the midst of the bush, Furthermore, say it, it shall come to pass if they will not believe you, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the later sign. So, what this prince 
is saying to Moses is if they don't believe the first sign which I demonstrated before you they will definitely believe the second sign and it shall come to pass that if they will not believe also these last two signs or neither hearken unto the voice of the first sign or yourself you shall take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land and the water which you would have took taken out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land all these were signs and miracles that were being demonstrated and explained to moses to equip him when he goes before Pharaoh. And Moses said unto the Lord, and remember this Lord is manifested as an angel of fire, a prince that is in the midst of the burning bush. And Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither do I have the confidence to speak? I'm just a servant. I'm slow when it comes to speech. And very slow when it comes to my tongue. What Moses is simply trying to say is, I'm a stammer. And the Lord said unto him, Who has made a man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb? Or the deaf, or who has made the blind to see? If I not as the Lord, now therefore go, and I'll be with your mouth, and shall teach you what you ought to say in the presence of Pharaoh. And Moses continued to plead and said, Oh my Lord, I pray thee send someone else and the anger of the lord was kindled against moses and he said is not aaron the levite your brother i know that he can speak well and also behold he is coming forth to meet you and when he sees you you will be glad in his heart meaning that the Lord actually knows that Aaron is more eloquent. He is even fluent in, spe in speaking. But the Lord does not want to send Aaron. These are the politics from the presence of the Lord. And the prince, which is an angel of fire, is the one that is representing God. It's actually explaining that Aaron is very good at speaking, is eloquent, is very confident. But the Lord does not want to send Aaron. Those are not the qualities that are needed by God inside Aaron. But the the one that does not have the qualities that are needed by the Lord is the one that is being sent. And the Lord is actually angry that Moses is explaining of the qualities that he doesn't have. But the Lord will not send the one that has got the qualities which are needed. I've seen the Lord doing this so many times. He goes to pick up someone that is not learned. The very last person that you people don't want to listen to. I've said this so many times again that I, I could not be the revelator that you really wanted. The revelator could not be exactly the character that you people wanted, but there is nothing that you can do. Because I am the revelator and it will not change. 
I know that you would have wished that the revelator was another character that studied the master's degree or someone that did someone that dresses in a way that you want but the lord does not function in that way he wants to send moses yet the one that has got the potential of speaking properly and fluently the one that can be able to preach fluently the one that can easily convince people when he speaks it is Aaron he's even saying I know that he can speak well and also behold he is coming to meet you and when he sees you he will be glad and you shall speak unto him and put words in his mouth Moses has to, has to put words into Aaron's mouth. Why not just send Aaron? It's because Aaron does not have the capacity that is inside Moses. But Aaron has got the qualities that are needed to go and stand before Pharaoh and start speaking. But when it comes to the authority and the capacity, doesn't matter you are good at speaking, it doesn't matter you know every verse, but if you don't have the calling, just keep quiet. Don't have the calling. Can you use good English language? You've got the vocabulary. You have you have everything that you have everything what it takes that when you are speaking people they listen to you but you don't have a calling you don't you don't have what it takes to partake in such an assignment Aaron so you have to take instructions from that same Moses who cannot speak properly the one that you feel like is not capable i'm the one that is able to speak i'm the one from the bible college i used to stand before the class and do presentations i've read the bible from genesis to revelations those are not the qualities that god wants if those are the qualities that God wanted, you would not have wasted time debating with Moses. An angelic prince of fire, which is speaking inside that burning bush, is debating with Moses. The Lord is debating with Moses. Why are you debating with Moses when you know that there is another man who has got the qualities that you are looking for? It is because the Lord is not looking for qualities, he's looking for capacity. Do you have the capacity to go and do this thing that I'm sending you? We are tired of people that have got the qualities, but they don't have the capacity. They are good at speaking. They are good at criticizing. They are good at analyzing. They are good at asking questions. After that, they go to sleep and they don't do anything. They are good at explaining. Good at explaining visions. Good at explaining spiritual things after that they don't do anything they go to sleep you don't have the capacity but you have the qualities but the capacity is inside Moses and and the Lord says you shall put words in that mouth of Aaron who speaks better than you and he shall be your mouthpiece And the Lord says, I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what he shall do. Does that make any sense? The Lord wants to teach Moses what Aaron will do. The Lord is telling Moses, put words inside Aaron's mouth. Everything here, the Lord has accepted that Moses cannot do this. But the Lord 
still doesn't want to remove Moses out of an equation that he has placed him. When the Lord has already chosen someone, he doesn't look back. When the Lord has already chosen someone, it does not matter you. You don't want to take instructions from that person. It doesn't matter that you want to belittle that person because of the way that he walks, the way he dresses, the way he presents himself. But the fact is that the Lord has chosen him. The Lord is actually proving to Moses that Aaron has all the potential in terms of confidence, in terms of speaking, in terms of being able to stand before Pharaoh. But still, all instructions that are going to come from above, they are going to be instructed by Moses. So there is never going to be a time that Aaron is going to hear the voice of God. No. With all the qualities that Aaron has, Aaron has been enrolled in Moses' calling. Aaron did not see the burning bush, but Aaron has to take instructions from Moses that has been sent which Moses, the same Moses that does not have the qualities, is the one that is going to be sending Aaron that has got the qualities. Because Aaron, you don't have the capacity. It doesn't matter how many books you read. Yes, you can read very well. You can speak fluently. But you don't have the calling. You don't have what it takes to become the revelator. You will never be the revelator. Never. Because you are not the revelator. The least you can do is take instructions from the revelator. And the Lord says, And he shall be my spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to the very word that you speak that comes out of your mouth and you shall be to him instead of God meaning that Moses was presented as a God to Aaron instead of Aaron getting direct instructions from God since he has got the qualities the Lord says no you Moses you shall be like God unto Aaron these are things which if you preach to people they will take whatever content you have released as blasphemy or errors but when you when you read such things from the scriptures people accept it why because you are taking this from the scripture how does god make another man a god to another man when god turns another man into a god and God then subdues himself and then tells Moses that you shall be a God to Aaron. That level of honor is very political. Why? Because that same God then in his tablet of commandments then instructs Moses saying you shall not worship other gods. And that God then sends Moses to Egypt with the first instruction. And while East Moses is on his way to Egypt with Aaron, equipped with all those miracles, signs, and wonders, the Lord goes beforehand and attends Pharaoh's heart. By the time Aaron is throwing down the road which changes into a serpent. The Lord has already prepared the magicians, the astrologers, and the wizards of Pharaoh. He has already equipped them with the very same signs so that they can be able to withstand to defend themselves against the same Moses 
that has been sent by the same Lord. And which Lord is that? Yes, it was the Lord that was speaking through the burning bush. But I took you back to Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, where it is clearly written that it was an angel of the Lord that was speaking that bush, meaning that it was a prince. I'm talking about the politics of princes and powers. So what is happening here is that Moses is representing a prince. The pharaoh that is in Egypt is representing another prince. There is a prince from the kingdom of light and there is a prince from the kingdom of darkness. And both, both of them, they represent powers. There were many miracles that were demonstrated, child of God. Changing water into blood, the cake dying, insects covering the land of Egypt. There were several signs that were declared by Moses. But even after Moses had declared those several signs, if I want to go through those signs, this presentation might stretch longer. After all those signs, the, the Lord repeatedly did one thing. He would hide in Pharaoh's heart. To the extent that the taskmasters that were giving the slaves work, at one moment they increased the patterns. And this thing was being influenced again by the Lord. So Moses is representing the princes of God from the kingdom of light. And Pharaoh is representing the princes of the devil himself. So within those disputes, there is the politics of princes in the realms. Who's going to conquer who? Between Moses and Pharaoh, these two are princes. And the Lord knew who was going to conquer who. Up until the last miracle, which was not just a miracle, it was a massacre. It was multiple matters. Where Moses is instructed to smear blood on each and every doorstep, of all the children of the tribe of God who were in the land of bondage in Egypt. Where the Lord told Moses that I'm going to send an angel of death which will slew, which will kill every firstborn child. I believe that angel, it was killing every firstborn creation of anything that belongs to the Egyptian. And that angel came at night, killed all the firstborns. This is how Pharaoh released the tribe of God that was in Egypt. After several miracles performed by Moses, after countless occasions where the Lord was actually the one that was heartening Pharaoh's heart. And it doesn't end there. We believe that Moses and the tribe of God, which are the slaves later to be Israelites, who return back to their roots as they journeyed out of Egypt, the Lord caused Pharaoh and his army to pursue Moses. All this was being caused by the Lord up until they reached a dead end, which was called the Dead Sea. Moses 
is equipped yet with another miraculous dimension and he passed the waters hither and thither so that the nation of God can cross and as they were crossing the Lord actually allows the princes of Egypt to follow through a trail that they had not created and they were all swallowed by the sea why is he trying to pursue Moses this thing had been allowed again by the Lord now that Moses has delivered the tribe of God and escaped from Pharaoh it didn't end there. Set a certain league of elders, which was led by Korah, Tata, and Abiram, I believe, they started leading a revolt against Moses in the wilderness. A revolt which these men never led while they were in Egypt. This thing was being influenced by the Lord. There is no devil that is mentioned in the book of Exodus. Even when they, even when they built a, a golden calf, while Moses was on the mountain being given the Ten Commandments, that thing was being caused by the Lord. So this certain league of elders, they start rising against Moses. And the Lord allowed this thing so that it becomes a demonstration to the other Israelites that had been delivered. And the way that those people died, it was so painful. The earth opened up and swallowed them. Many of those that had been delivered out of Egypt, they were massacred in the wilderness. So meaning that they only got delivered out of Egypt so that they go and die in the wilderness. The snakes that were biting people in the wilderness, up until Moses is told to build a bronze fiery serpent, Which, which, if any one of these that had been beaten by a serpent would go beyond before that bronze fiery serpent and kneel before it, the bitings would stop, or those that had been beaten would be healed from their wounds. There are many cases that happened in the wilderness which led to multiple killings but all those killings they were being caused by the lord why because he wanted to downplay the number of the people that had came out of egypt even moses himself he was not destined to enter canaan it was rather joshua who was supposed to enter canaan so amongst the number of people that wanted to be downplayed the number of people that wanted to be reduced so that they don't enter canaan it included the very same moses that had delivered the children of israel out of the land of bondage and he told that you are going to take them further until you enter canaan but he did not enter canaan but rather Moses is substituted before he enters Canaan. And when Moses is substituted before he enters Canaan, Joshua takes over. And when you go to the book of Jude, you learn that the body of Moses was being wrestled for by two princes which were disputing for the, for the body of Moses. And the two princes that were disputing for the body of Moses, it was who? It was Lucifer and michael the same two opponents that fought in heaven and who fell it was satan and this time 
Michael does not have the capacity to kick the devil further. He can only rebuke him. And he says, the Lord rebukes you. Why? Because the last time that Michael was able to defeat Lucifer, it is because this thing, that thing had been allowed by the Lord. This time, you are not going to kick the devil. Why? Because you are in the devil's territory. The politics of princes is established by the Lord himself. It is influenced by the Lord. If Angel Michael has the same capacity, then he doesn't even need to mention the name of the Lord. He has to dethrone he has to dethrone the devil right on the spot. But this time, when it comes to wrestling for the body of Moses, you have to engage the Lord. Why? Because Lucifer has a right over that body because of certain things that Moses did. Moses had anger issues. He, he met at someone in Egypt today. And he, he hit the rock twice. He was actually supposed to enter Canaan, but he did not enter. And all those shenanigans that were being done by Moses, yet as a chosen servant of God, they were actually being allowed by the same Lord again. Why? Because this is the same Lord that was hardening Pharaoh's heart, causing frustration inside Moses. And the same Moses appears in the transfiguration alongside Jesus child of God I'm here to conclude the politics of princes the mystery of how God runs this earth evolves and revolves around the princes of the kingdom of light and the princes of the kingdom of darkness, they represent two governments. They represent two entities. The reason why God separated light from darkness is not because he wanted to cast away darkness. Darkness is always going to be there so that light becomes significant. The Lord does not use the angels of light as his messengers or servants only. Even the angels of darkness, you hate it, where the angel of death killed every firstborn in Egypt. But whenever you hear about the spirit of death, you believe that we are talking about a demon that is coming from the pit of hell. Whatever you believe, I want you to know that the Lord has got authority, capacity, and power over everything, above everything. And he can delegate any kingdom between light and darkness. I'm here once again, sent by the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus.